Hello again, it's Jess or Jashi Corinne, and in today's video I'm going to be giving you guys a flip through of my third bullet journal. I started this journal at the beginning of 2018, and it's lasted me about 6 months. For this one I used the navy coloured A5 or medium sized Leuchtum 1917 with the dot grid. To decorate the front of this I used a rosy studio sticker, but as you can see the lettering of that has started to wear off a bit just from me taking the journal around with me. I also attached this small journal charm to the top, and my best friend has a matching one that she has on hers. For today's flip through I'm not going to be doing a lot of explaining regarding the spreads I have, but I'm going to spend a few seconds on each page so if you wanted to pause and look at any of the details please do. If you wanted to find any still images, for almost all of my spreads you can also go check out my Instagram page, a link to which is in the description box below. On the first page of my journal I have my colour key along with my name and email address. After this I included some photos just to decorate the start of my journal. Moving on we have the index which I only actually used up until April 2018. After my index we have my word for the year which is improve. Following this we have my calendex which I started off using quite a lot but as time went on used less and less. Following this we have several pages related to my goals, and I went with a style of 52 goals in 52 weeks. This was inspired by Sunshine and Stationery, and a link to her YouTube channel can be found in the description box below. At the start of the year I put a lot of effort in drawing out term planners for the entire school year. As can be assumed, only half of these got used because I'm moving into a new journal for the second half of the year. To finish off my start of year setup, we have my savings page, my period and intimacy tracker, and my cleaning schedule. Then we're straight into my monthly pages. For January, I went with an orange theme, so the main colour on all of my spreads for this was orange. After my monthly log, habits tracker, steps tracker, doodle page, gratitude log, and social media scheduler. Then we were straight on into my weekly pages. I also had a collection for the things that I wanted to do before term one started. Because for the majority of January I was on holiday, most of the pages I have in here for my weeklies were only one page long. To finish off the month, we have my month in review page. For February, I went with a yellow color theme. My habit tracker, steps tracker, and gratitude page were all done in the same style, while my daily doodles I decided to confine to regular sized boxes. I tried a different style of social media tracker, and having enjoyed my memory style monthly log from January, I decided to include a memories log for the month as well. After this we were straight on into my weekly pages. As you'll see, between some of these weekly spreads, I also have other collections. These mainly include things like to-do lists for school, or other specific tasks that I wanted to group on one page. For February, I finished this off with another month in review. For March I was actually doing a collaborative theme with KM of Journal with KM. For this, all of the pages I had as part of my monthly setup had a nature inspired theme, so I included some native New Zealand flora and fauna to decorate my spreads. This worked really well with the green colour theme that I had for the month. If you hadn't already noticed, the order of the colour themes from my monthly pages are in a slight variation of rainbow order. So instead of starting with red, I instead started with orange and then went from yellow to green, and then for April I went with blue. After my monthly pages, we jump again into my weekly spreads. For my weekly spreads, I like to try a lot of different styles to figure out what I do and don't like in my journal. You'll notice that throughout this journal, no two weekly spreads are exactly the same. Though they may be similar in some aspects, there will be differences between them. 
Also, just as a reminder, if you wanted to check out any of the setups I've done for my weekly pages, you can check out the link in the description box that takes you to my playlist for my weekly plan with me videos. Although I set up my March and Review spread, I never actually ended up going back and filling it in. Having enjoyed the theme and my decorations for March, I wanted to do the same in April. So for April, along with my colour theme of blue, I decided to go for a crystal theme, and I included this in each of the pages that I had for my monthly setup. As you'll see from some of these spreads, as well as some we've already looked at and some that are still to come, there are some things that I just did not end up finishing in my journal. I never ended up going back and filling them in, even though I'd told myself that I was going to. I don't feel too guilty about this though, because I obviously had other things to do. As I didn't really use my review page for March, I wanted to try something different in April. However, I didn't actually end up using this either. From May, along with my purple colour theme, I was going for minimalistic style spreads. This was a really interesting challenge for me, because I've never really considered my spreads to be minimalistic. It was nice, however, to not have to rule out so many lines for some of the spreads that I typically like to do. For instance, my habits tracker, steps tracker, and social media scheduler. Although I wasn't really using my journal so much towards the end of May, the monthly pages I set up for this month were likely my favourite from this journal. As I moved house at the start of June, a lot of the June setups that I typically had, like my weeklies, didn't actually end up getting done for the start of the month. I was however going for a pink clouds inspired theme from my monthly pages. This is another month that really highlighted some of the gaps that I have in my journal. Although one of my goals for this journal was leaving a lot less blank pages, and as you'll have been able to see, there certainly are some, I really do love what I have been able to include in this journal, and the kind of snapshot of my life it gives for these past six months. For the remaining pages in my journal, I decided to do a mid-year review using the June prompt list from the Boho Berry Challenge. The layout for this was inspired by Alexandra Plans, and there's a link to her channel in the description box below. As you can see, this is only actually half finished, as when I moved into my new journal I didn't really bother to go back and fill in anything that was left over. At the very back of my journal, I started to play around with what I wanted my new journal to look like. To do this, I considered the good and bad points of bullet journal number 3, and then used those points to decide what I wanted to do to set up my new one. I also included some smaller mock layouts of the spreads that I knew I wanted to put in my new journal. The very last pages I used for pen testing and scribbling. And then in the very back of this one here, I have some of the spare paper from my journal, a card from one of my students, some stamps, and then the labels for archiving my journal. As I mentioned previously, I did totally love using this journal, but it did have some issues, most of which were self-inflicted. The biggest one of these was my washi tape borders. 
As much as I totally love the colour range that I have here on the side, it did make for a lot of chunkiness in my journal and made ruling lines quite difficult. As you can see from the top view, this end where the spine is is actually quite thin compared to this end which is a lot thicker. If we press down on this here, you can see how thin it is supposed to be compared to how thick it actually ended up. Despite this, I do completely love how this journal turned out. I know that during the course of this journal, I had a lot of really good memories and learnt a lot of really good lessons. Thank you for watching. If you had any thoughts, comments or feels, please do leave them in the comments section below. And if you liked today's video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to my channel to see the videos I release every Thursday and Sunday. And until next time, bye!